With a population of nearly 16 million people, Istanbul is one of the world's most crowded cities. And as anyone who's ever had somewhere to go during rush hour will tell you, commuting here is no mean feat. But geo-mapping vehicles like this are making driving around the city easier. They provide useful information to traffic police and city planners. Our cars gather all the information from traffic signs and boards to underpass on streets and we digitalize them. So we are trying to find a solution to overcome congestion with the help of these data. We are also working with other parts of the government such as the Education Ministry and Istanbul Water and Sewage Administration. They can track and monitor their current constructions and works through our systems. The city is also trying to make life easier for people who don't want to drive. It's set up a bike sharing service. People can pick and drop off the two-wheelers at convenient locations across the city. It's also introduced mobile payments for public transport. And there's even a way to pay bus and train fares with empty plastic bottles. But the government's not just trying to reduce road congestion. It wants to turn Istanbul into a smart city, a plan that requires technology. So it's partnering with hundreds of companies, from local entrepreneurs to some of the world's biggest technology producers. Telecom giant Turkcells built the country's largest data center, critical hardware for storing digital information, and has plans for more. Ericsson set up a 5G research center to help speed up the exchange of data. And Huawei is running a pilot project for smart water distribution. Yet there are dozens more sectors that still have to be automated, which could take years. Asset management, smart maintenance, uh, smart security, smart uh, railway systems planning, uh, water treatment, energy saving, smart lighting, uh, response systems. So there are so many parts of the smart city. And interestingly, uh, the, the stakeholders are different. It's just not municipality. Experts say the most critical element for this transformation is a highly skilled domestic workforce. These are just tools. What, we'll, what Turkey has to do is invest in the intellectual property and in the skills to be able to take those tools and provide services you know, for the rest of the world, for the region. With a relatively young population and high literacy rates, the government believes it's well positioned to develop expertise in these fields. If it can succeed, the technology could improve the lives of people in this city and help Turkey boost exports of high-value services. Mubin Nasser, TRT World, Istanbul.